Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and other top stories we are tracking with you on Tuesday, the 23rd of July. India focuses on job creation in rural areas with first budget after election. Hindu temple vandalized, defaced with graffiti in Canada. And Bangladesh to formally accept court ruling on job quotas after Delhi protests. And now for all the details, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Tuesday unveiled the first budget of third term of PM Modi led government. The budget struck a balance with having key focus on job creation and rural infrastructure. A report. India struck a balance between greater spending on jobs and rural development while narrowing the fiscal deficit in its 2024-25 budget unveiled on Tuesday, the first in the third term of PM Narendra Modi-led government. In her budget speech on Tuesday, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said the government will spend $24 billion on job spurring efforts over the next five years and $32 billion on rural development this year alone. The budget's employment-boosting measures include incentives for companies such as those in manufacturing and programs to improve skills and hand out cheaper loans for higher education. Meanwhile, the government will also maintain spending on long-term infrastructure projects at 11.11 .11 trillion rupees, offering long-term loans of 1.5 trillion rupees to states to fund such expenditure. Turning attention to the full year and beyond in this budget, we particularly focus on employment, skilling, MSMEs and the middle class. I am happy to announce the Prime Minister's package of five schemes and initiatives to facilitate employment, skilling, and other opportunities for 4.1 crore youth over a five-year period. We will endeavor to maintain strong fiscal support for infrastructure over the next five years in conjunction with imperatives of other priorities and fiscal consolidation. This year, I have provided 11 lakh 11,111 crore rupees for capital expenditure. This would be 3.4% of our GDP. The union budget also cut income tax rates for some citizens in an effort to boost consumption. The changes also increased the standard deduction for salaried employees to 75,000 rupees from 50,000 rupees earlier. Sita Raman also announced cut on import duty on mobile phones and some key parts to 15% from 20%, while custom duty were also reduced to 6%. While the defence allocation saw a nominal increase, 30% was allocated to border roads organisation, a move aimed to boost the border infrastructure. Praising the budget, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, the budget will empower the new middle class the poor, the villages, and added, the budget will bring unlimited opportunities for the youth. However, the budget got a mixed reaction from opposition parties, with many leaders terming it a budget to save the government. Former Finance Minister and Congress lawmaker P. Chidambaram said, there are missed opportunities in the union budget, and added, Sitaraman has virtually adopted the employment-linked incentive outlined in Congress manifesto. Meanwhile, Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav said the budget is a way to retain power as it mentioned a special project for Bihar and Andhra Pradesh. Echoing a similar sentiment, TMC MP Kalyan Banerjee taking a jibe at the BJP-led government said that Sita Raman presented a seat-saving budget. And amid strained ties between Ottawa and New Delhi and rising concerns over extremist activities in Canada, the Swami Narayan Temple in Edmonton fell victim to vandalism on Monday.
Canadian MP Chandra Arya in a post on X condemned the incident and called on Canadian law enforcement agencies to take this issue seriously before this rhetorics convert into physical action against Hindu Canadians. He also pointed to the impunity enjoyed by Khalistani extremists in Canada and said Gurpat Pan Singh Pannu last year publicly called for Hindus to go back to India. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has come under diplomatic attack from India for harboring and promoting anti-India activities on Canada's soil. Earlier this year, India also rejected Trudeau's remarks regarding the killing of Khalistan separatist Hardeep Singh Nijar, stating that they have highlighted a worrying tolerance for separatism and violence within Canada, which created odds between both the countries. Moving on, Pakistan's incarcerated former Prime Minister and PTI party chief Imran Khan on Monday admitted that he gave a call for a protest outside the army's general headquarters in Rawalpindi before his arrest, local media has reported. Khan said he got to know that he would be arrested and he therefore called for a peaceful protest, but it was termed as treason after clashes were reported. He criticized the treatment of PTI supporters since the May 9 violence and the role of certain political figures in manipulating judicial processes. Khan has been in jail since last year in multiple cases. He blames Pakistan's powerful military for his ouster from office. Meanwhile, locals in Pakistan's Karachi have lamented that they have been squeezed dry trying to survive the soaring inflation. Arpot. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi city are irked due to rising prices of essential commodities and have blamed the government's policies for their economic woes. Pakistan and the IMF this month reached an agreement for a 37-month loan program worth $6.28 billion. Tough measures such as raising tax on agricultural incomes and lifting electricity prices have prompted concerns about poor and middle-class Pakistanis grappling with soaring inflation and the prospect of higher taxes. Another resident recalled pre-election promises of relief that have yet to materialize. Pakistan has relied heavily on IMF programs for years, at times nearing the brink of sovereign default and having to turn to countries such as the UAE and Saudi Arabia to provide it with external financing. And the Sri Lankan Navy has apprehended at least nine Indian fishermen and their two boats on charges of poaching in the territorial waters of the island nation, according to the Rameshwaram Fishermen Association. Reports suggested the detained fishermen had been handed over to the fisheries department for onward action. This year, more than 200 Indian fishermen have been arrested by Sri Lanka for illegal fishing. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. This year alone, more than 200 Indian fishermen have been apprehended for illegal fishing. Moving on, Bangladesh will formally accept the Supreme Court order meeting a key demand of anti-Kota protesters, the news agency Reuters reported on Tuesday. 
The demand of abolishing the quota was among the eight demands by protesters, which also included a public apology from Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the reopening of university campuses shut when the violence began. The anti-discrimination student movement, which had given 48 hours ultimatum to the government, had also called for the resignation of some ministers and university officials and the dismissal of police officers deployed in the areas where students were killed. Thousands were injured and around 150 were killed in protests that turned violent last week as security forces fired tear gas, rubber bullets and sound grenades to scatter the demonstrators. Prime Minister Hasina has blamed her political opponents, Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the jamaat e islami Party and its student wing for the deadly violence. In her first remarks over the situation, Hasina said government was forced to impose curfew to protect the lives and property of the citizens. She added that the curbs will be lifted whenever the situation gets better. BNP is not a good thing. We have to do this. We have to do and days after assuming the office, Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Monday reiterated claim on Tri Junction of Lipo Lake, Kalapani and Limpyadara, calling them part of Nepal's territory. Speaking in the parliament, Oli said Kathmandu is clear and firm about its international borders and added that the Himalayan nation is working with India to resolve the border issues. During the high-level visits between the Nepali and Indian prime ministers, the issue of the border have been raised timely and these issues would be resolved through the established mechanisms, he added. Oli, in his previous term as prime minister, had amended the constitution by incorporating a new political and administrative map in the preamble constitution. The new map included three Indian territories. New Delhi had rejected the map and said artificial enlargement of claims is not based on historical fact or evidence and is not tenable. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.